difference in your life. Ask God to touch you from everyone that will be on this altar. Let the word, let the praise, let everything be a blessing today. Blessed be your name forever. We honor you, almighty God. Now lift your hands and wave it to him and say, thank you, Jesus. Leave it again and say, thank you, Jesus. Father, we exalt you, O God. We magnify your name for the mighty things that you are going to do in this service. Lord, we worship you because everyone that will be here will not go back home the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, take charge of the sound. Take charge of every equipment. Take charge of everything that will happen here today. And let your name alone be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Now give the Lord a shout and a good clap as we welcome the praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, know you are excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Can you wave your hands to him? Give him a shout of praise. One more time. Can you wave your hands and give the Lord a shout.
is Jehovah. Lift up your hands and bless the Lord. Woo! Can you lift up your voice and say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.
God. Raise your hands and give him worship. Adore him. He is God and God alone. No one can take his glory from him. Just wave your hands and exalt him. Magnify him. Call him his name, Yahweh. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we come to say is thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Please have your seat. business leaders, which is in line with the Great Wave movement, turning ordinary people into leaders. The curriculum for this month covers business Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. It's so exciting to be in God's presence. My name is James Amagbe. And in this house, I serve in the office of the co-pastor and the coordinator of Aviva and Aviva Voice, uh, Voice Challenge and Talent Management. And I also work at the University of Port Harcourt as a teacher. On behalf of our father and our mother, Pastor George and Manuela Izumo, I want to welcome you to this first service. And I'm, I know that you're excited to be here. If you're excited, look at your neighbor. Yeah, thank you. God bless you. Look at your neighbor and tell the person, God bless you for being in this service. Tell the person again, you will never go back the same. Something new will happen to you. Now say amen to that. Today is 24th and we'll be looking at C24. Power C time. Power C time. And the topic is you will give an account. You know, as teachers, we always ask you to say it again to yourself. You will give an account. <laughs> say it again. You will give. Okay, now say, I will give an account. Now, key text is taken from Romans 14, 11 to 12. It reads, for it is written, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. The body of the text reads, in the, in the actualization of a pursuit, the how is as important or even far more important than the why. That's why the Bible emphasizes in Deuteronomy 8.18, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power. To get wealth, that is, that he may establish his covenant, which is swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Meaning, while it is necessary to prosper on earth, how you go about the, the pursuit of your dreams and aspirations matters to God. Also, how you steward the resources God has given to you will be taken into account continually. Bear in mind that someday, after all is said and done, you will give an account of your life to God. Now decide now what that account will be. Tell your neighbor, decide now what that account will be. Now you will, you will give an account of the following. Number one, if you received Jesus or ignored and mocked him, I know we have all received Jesus. And whatever you lived, a life that was pleasing to God or not. Now two, 
how you used your gifts and talents to fulfill God's purpose for your life. And three, your service and labor in God's kingdom. The last one, how you manage God's resources. Make sure you are prepared. Tell your neighbor, are you prepared? Now say, I am prepared. Let's take a word of prayer. Lift your right hand and say, Father, thank you for your word today. Help me to live prepared for that day in Jesus' name. Now, our action points, get rid of your distractions. If there's anything distracting you, it's time to get rid of it. Amen. It's time for our Roy Covenant. We're going to take it together. You lift your right hand as we say it together. At the count of two, one, two, go. I confess that God is a good God. He is my source. He's taking good care of me. My life is sustained by his word. Today, standing on Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, I affirm that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He died and rose from the dead. His sacrifice paid the price for all my sins. He is in heaven now, but his Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus is my life. I live by his word. I am led by his spirit. I believe that in him and through him, I am a member of the family of God. And very soon, he will come back to take me home. Because of Jesus Christ, I am blessed of God. My DNA is supernatural. I walk in prosperity. I create my dreams. I find favor everywhere. Kings come to the brightness of my rising. Nations open their gates and treasures to me. I cannot fail. Nothing dies in my hands. No power can hurt my destiny. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. On my path, there is no sickness nor death. This year, 2024, I received the covenant of Roy. The Lord is my shepherd. Gateway International Church is my spiritual family. I put God first. I pay my tithe. I am a soul winner. I serve in God's kingdom. My life works. My faith works. My relationships works. My business works. Everything works. My covenant place is at the top, most top. Every promise and prophecy of 2024 will be fulfilled in my life. There shall be no loss nor evil report in my life this year. Only good things are permitted in my life. One more time. Only good things are permitted in my life. Now with the clap offering, let's welcome Life Song Worship. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands with me and say, what the enemy, just say with me, what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. Say with me, say, my God will never fail. If you believe that, say, hallelujah.
Father, Son, and everything around for your good. Can I see you wave your hands to him? Wave your hands to him if you believe that. Hey, you take for the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Do you believe that? You take for the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good.
Amazing Church. You're welcome to church. Listen to amazing testimonies. This thing works. Hallelujah. Church, praise the Lord. This thing works. It works like magic. On the last day of January to please God, the video, I, have, I was having an issue with my arm here. I, I wasn't praying about it. I thought it's because he came to arrange seats. That's why. So on the, when Papa finished ministry, when he was when the uh, program has ended, he was climbing the altar. He said there's someone with the arm here. He couldn't stretch it. He climbed out and he demonstrated. Me, like stretch my arm just once like this. I was healed. Praise the Lord. And secondly, uh, I was having to have some businesses. I have some companies and I have managers that are managing it. So uh, during the last days, the last mo uh, mo uh, last uh, week of February. One of my branch, I was having, the manager was complaining that she experiencing some losses of thousands of naira. After balancing the account, it wouldn't be complete. She was worried. She sent me, it says, I was, okay, when she told me that, I said, how long? She said, for some days. I said, why didn't you tell me? This is witchcraft. I now went to the place. I brought oil, brought communion, water, and prayed that this tree bears witness. It stopped for that day. The next day, it continued. And she told me that if this thing continues, she's scared. She will stop work. I was like, Holy Spirit of God, what do I do? I now came on that, uh, uh, this uh, March prophetic uh, prayers. And now the last day, which was Sunday, which we brought stone for Ebenezer for Papa to pray for. The, uh, on the second service, Papa mentioned my case. He said, that business, that losses you are experiencing, that devourer, I rebuke it and it not happen again. I said, amen, this is for me. I now went home and that Monday she resumed business. And she was like, what do we do? I said, don't worry, it will not happen again. Take this stone, put it in that place, and everything continues. I have come to return to glory of God. Since that day till now, we have not experienced any losses. And the Lord restored. Within that week, he restored every dime that we lost. I don't know how it happened, but I said, God, to your glory, let me be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. You are my healer, let your name be glorified. You fight my battles, let your name be glorified. Your name is ever great. 
the coco poroto. Somebody shout amen like thunder. Amen. Lift your two hands higher thy head and scream again like you mean it. 2024. 2024. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say it a second time. 2024. 2024. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Open your mouth and make a declaration of who God is to you. A preketora, a palate, a teke, jacica, parato, kibarata, a prekete emosha, a liante, a penoma, a capa, a crataya, a teke, a recotia, a preketora, a teke, a teke, a teke, a teke, a prate, a kosia, barata, a perecotia. We give you the praise, Jesus. Everywhere you are, shout Amen. He said to Abraham, as far as your eye can see. Now you have seen it and you must possess it. I can't hear your amen. Whatever you saw, you must possess. Lift your hand above your hand and say, Father, Father in, 2024, in 2024, I possess, I possess what, I what I have seen. Every dream, every, dream, every, desire, every desire, every expectation, every, every, vision, every vision, I possess. Open your mouth and make it in I possess everything. Begin to step into your inheritance. Every vision I possess. giants in the mountain and was ready to drive them out. Can you lift your hands and say any man, any, man, any, woman, any woman, any organization, any organization occupying, occupying my portion, get out. Any power any resisting resist my inheritance, inheritance catch fire. fire. Can you lift your hand again and say any man, any, man, any, woman, any woman, any organization, any organization occupying occupy my portion, get out. Any power resisting my advance, fire open your mouth and crack it. Ete kubush, ete kabaya, ete kete yakush, ete kabada bada ba, ete kete yakabush, ete kabe torabush, isa te 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 leke. Somebody shout amen like thunder. Amen. Lift up that two hands. This is much. The first quarter is almost gone. Anyone here that the journey is still slow? As you are hearing me, the Lord hasten your journey. Every power slowing you down. I kick it out of your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. I kick it out of your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the year for your wedding. This is the year for your building. 
This is the year for your travel. This is the year for your lifting. As you have believed it, the Lord created for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We have Peniel this week. I want to pray concerning it. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 31, 11 to 13. Put it up for me. Deuteronomy 31, 11 to 13. This is the reason for Peniel. We pick everything we do from the patterns of the Bible. He said, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Moses was telling the people, he said, when I am gone, he said, there's a time when all Israel must appear before God wherever he chooses. And of course, you knew when they enter Canaan, he chose Jerusalem. Right? Are you with me? He said, when they come, read the law before them. Next verse. He said, gather the people together. Men and women and children. And the stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the words of this year. Verse 13. And that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as he live in the land whether you go over Jordan to possess it. When a church is growing and dispersing and crowds are gathering, uh, you need a time where you gather the people. That's why it's called homecoming. Are you with me? And then the person that is over there in our branch in Yenegua, in the Old Testament, at that time, they didn't have phone, they didn't have television. The person in this other city has never seen the high priest before. Never had his voice before. Now they can hear me online, Right? But at that time, they never seen the high priest, never heard him. That's their first time of sitting right under the ministry of their priest. Now, a person can be here or they are doing his own thing until he comes to headquarters. And then the people hear from you directly what the pattern is. It corrects the things that are happening there. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking to you about. Now, it also gives the family a sense of belonging. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. Somebody can come from Calabar Church or from Abuja Church or from Uyo Church or any of the or Kigwe, any of the places we have our branches. As they arrive here, that may be that girl's finding a husband. That may be that one's finding a wife. It's a sense of family. I don't think you are getting what I'm talking about. That's why we do that. It's a pattern of the scriptures. Now, there are people who are foolish enough not to come. And that's why we're going to pray that God will break the yoke of that foolishness. Can you grab your neighbor's hand? I'm going to cry out to God for gateway. Whichever location they are, Lagos, Abuja, anywhere, God will give them the grace to appear. We put it in Easter because many of people are traveling. Today, no, yesterday I was somewhere and I was looking at the list of the members uh, and families that's the families, not members, that I know have given me that they relocated this year, and I counted 91 families. 91, that from here, they have relocated abroad. 91. In one country, not the whole. This is only UK. 91 families. So when people travel like that, we want a time in the year that when they are planning their uh, visit home, the planning within a time they can meet with their church family. So you put it within Easter that when they come, they plan their trips. I'm arriving in Nigeria within this time. I will go to village. I will do this then. I'm going to spend time with the church and meet old friends they've not seen for five years, three years. I don't know if you are getting what I'm talking about. So that's how you plan. Everything you do in leadership is a strategic thing. It's not just program. It's the future of the church you are designing. Because you are not going to live forever. 
Am I talking to somebody here today? Every lead that takes five years, ten years, fifteen years, fifty years, so you can stabilize what you have done. I don't have sons and daughters fighting to hurry church. I am trying to build a system that God can use when I'm gone. I want you to lift up your neighbor's hands. And I want you to lift your voice with a shout and say, Father, Father gather your people gather from, people everywhere, from everywhere during Peniel. As they step in here, change their story. Oh God, change their story. Open your mouth and pray. hear your amen. amen. Lift up your neighbors and say, Father, Father from day one, from day give one. us an atmosphere of your glory. Open your mouth and cry out to God. From day one. Every day, let it be like men and women enter the atmosphere of your glory. Voice be loud and lift up your neighbor and shout, Father, Father, let this meeting let this spark meeting. revival. Let it build community. Let it create connections. Let open doors. Let it open opportunities. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and cry out to God. If one person gets and the story goes around the world, their service is fulfilled. Grab your neighbor's hand. I want you to lift up the hand. 
I want to say, Father, Father, Good Friday night, Good Friday night, Sunday, Easter Sunday, Sunday. Father, Father, show your hand, show your, hand. Show your power, show your power. Use, our use our man of God, do an unusual thing, open your mouth and cry out to God. for yourself in this period. Open your mouth. While we worship, you can pray for anything you want. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and tell him. You are the Lord. 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 You are the everyone here is asking for something before this week is over let it be in their hands I declare over you the answer you seek is commanded there is a speed of help that is coming for you we have talked about business. We have talked about lifting. We have talked about turn around. It's your turn to walk in them. I decree over you. You will see massive enlargement of course. I bless you this morning. Father, as we get into your word, help us again. And every man and woman shout amen. amen. Can you greet our very straight persons before you sit down? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now lift up your right hand above your head and say, I am, I am gateway. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Only good things are permitted in my life. Now louder today, I open my heart to the word of God. I believe that the power of God we touch my life. The word of God will work for me. And I know that my life will never, never, ever remain the same in Jesus Christ's name. And if you are one of us, shout amen. So it is done for you. 
Well, we are continuing our series on money match. Amen. And uh, the Lord is your shepherd. You are not permitted to lack anything. And everything that looks like lack in your life is dying this year. If you shout, Amen, God confirm your own. We have been running a series titled, The Shepherd is My Source. The first week we dealt with the principle of the Bihag. If you are not here, listen to that message. And if you have not been attending any of our Wednesday Bible studies, please, before you go, pick the materials on the trainings we have done on business. And those who missed last Wednesday, I believe, missed a crucial part of all the things we are talking about. What I'm saying, is that true? And you, you will regret it. It's not a curse. It's the truth. If you don't listen to the things we are talking about. Because your business needs an upgrade. Amen. Some people don't know when their life is stagnant. They don't know when their life is stagnant. If a man is driving now. And then you drive. You see a, a young man standing by the road. He's eating a banana. And you drive for one hour again and you are passing. You see the young man standing there. The banana is almost finished. You drive another one hour. You come. You see the young man again standing by the road. And uh, uh, this time he's gisting with somebody. You keep seeing the same young man on the same road. You don't need anybody to tell you you are running in circles. No, you didn't hear me. You are not making progress. You are returning to the same place you are coming from. Are you hearing me? If all your life you are seeing the same thing, you are not making progress. There has to be a dimension beyond where you are. Am I talking to somebody here? You must go forward. So why we are teaching is to raise your life, to take you forward. Praise the Lord. So the first Sunday we dealt with the principle of the Bihag. Second Sunday we dealt with the power of connections. The third Sunday, we dealt with the blessing of opportunities. And today, I'll be talking to you on the test of the 10%. Because I need to teach you on something that has to bring the spiritual dimension to the teachings we are giving. A few things I want you to remember is this. Number one, not everyone without cash is poor. And not everyone that has cash is prosperous. That somebody has not no cash doesn't mean the person is poor. That somebody has a lot of cash doesn't mean the person is prosperous. You need to understand that so when I'm teaching on prosperity, it's not just about getting money. Are you still with me? Prosperity is more than material riches. A man can have a lot of money and be a lot poor. If you doubt me, ask a man in the Bible called Nebal. Remember Nebad had a quarrel with David, whose wife's name is Abigail. You remember her, him? Very rich and very stupid. In fact, the wife said, my husband is stupid. And she was right. You are not hearing me. Now, there are a lot of people that have cash, nothing. Ted John chapter 1, verse 3. He said, beloved, I wish above all things... And uh, uh, that is it, chapter 1, verse 3 of chapter 1, verse 2. It's I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even, verse 2, even as I saw what? Prosper. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be in good health. Somebody say, in health. in health. Can I say, in health? In health. And He wants your soul to what? Prosper. So you are emotionally sound. You are physically healthy. And then you have money in your hand. That's a little bit like balance. Is that true? You're not hearing me. Now, there are people who don't have cash, but have a mindset that will ultimately produce cash. You may hear now, you don't have any money. I'm sure you know that blessing is first spiritual before it becomes practical. Huh? Uh, yesterday, I was out somewhere with uh, Pastor Happy James, and uh, uh, we're talking to one of my friends, 
we are together in the same university. We were in the same class. We graduated from the same department and all that. So we are just gisting with some of them. And uh, uh, one of them made a comment. He was talking about me. He came for the, my wife's uh, birthday. Uh, we hosted somewhere. And then he was talking about something. He said that he was gisting with a few persons that were members of Gateway that he, meet, he met in business. And they were talking. So he said to the person, if your pastor was not pastoring you, he will be a millionaire and much more richer. So he said, the person was shocked. He said, listen, look at me. This yesterday, I was with him somewhere. He said, when we left school, pastor was just 20 something, maybe 21. And then one day, himself was saying, he said he was at uh, Transamadi, where they sell, you know, when you are going to Transamadi, at the entrance, I think they call it Waja, where they sell those buildings, all your tools and all that. You remember? He said he was there. And then he saw me one day walk into the place. And I saw him, I greeted him, how are you? We hugged and then, he said, where are you coming from? So I said, I'm coming from WellTech. He said, went to look for a job. I said, no, I just did a little contract with them. And I explained to him what I did. He's looking at me, 20 something, coming from there. And I told him what I did. He has been hanging around his uncle there, moving around transmitting, looking for a job. So I told him, I said, this is what I did for them. This is what I did and all that. It's Christmas. I went to lay some things for some companies to supply some things for them. He said, how much did you make out of them? And I told him. And at that time, he said, even if he was employed, what I talked about would be maybe five times what they would pay him. You're not hearing me from just going to do that. So he said, no. So we talked. He was excited and I left. And when I was about to go, he said, I told him. I said, you see this thing? I said, you have some people. You are dealing, you are here in Transamadi. Why don't you talk to some of these businessmen, you know, who know, can connect you to some people. And then I'm going to help you to get this done and all that. I said, even Christmas, since I'll prepare for you and you can go and market. He went out. In a few days' time, he talked to three persons. He said, that's how he began business. He never looked for a job again. Happy was there. I was 21, graduated from school. Others are running around looking for where they'll be employed. Then he was telling happy them and all that. The first time he met Manuela, he said he was sitting in my house. With, uh, because by the time we started working in business, he became my friend, very close. He came to my house in one room, boys' quarter. And we're sitting there talking. And we're, that, he said suddenly a knock was on the door. And it was Manuela that came in, my fiance. And then she came in and saw us gisting. And she said, are you with me? No, you're not hearing me. And she said, she saw us talking. And she was listening to us and she said, continue your discussion. We, because as she came, we stopped talking. He said, I want to hear what people are talking about. So we tried to shift. We said, no, I want to hear. And then we continued our gist. So she just sat in one of the chairs there. We are talking. And we finished. What was I talking? We are discussing our strategy of reaching somebody in an NPC to see how we can get something out of him. This is a 20-something-year-old boy. We are planning the strategy there. And I was an assistant pastor. He said what shocked him with Manuela was that she was looking at her. He was... And her interest was not on the environment because everywhere shows I didn't have much money. He said, but her interest was on what I was saying. So it was like she was thinking that this guy has ideas. She, he can feed me. No, you're not hearing. He said, that's what she was thinking. You see, listening in life, a man can be broke physically. But if the man has ideas, come on, are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Yes, now, let me give you four things that will tell you that somebody is processing wealth. The money has not come, but he's processing it. The first thing is healthy self-esteem. If you meet anybody that has healthy self-esteem, he's processing something. If you meet somebody who has low self-esteem, please don't follow him on a journey. The second one is vision and creativity. 
if you are here, you are dating a guy, and you say he's broke, but he has no vision, and he's looking nice, and you're trying to marry him out of pity, believing his future will be better, his future won't be better. Anybody that has no vision and creativity, don't follow him on a journey. The third thing is spiritual authority. Any man that is broke and has no prayer life, has no spiritual authority, if you follow him on a journey, both of you end in a pit. Because he can't pray himself out. How can he help you go forward? So you check, number one, healthy self-esteem. You check vision and creativity. You check spiritual authority. And the fourth thing you check is his relationships, strategic relationships. If you can see these four things in any human being, no matter how poor he is, is a rich man about to happen. Strategic relationships. If you don't see these four, I didn't say two of them. If you don't see all four, don't trust the person's future. I'm talking to those younger people. And I, I, I won't say this in other services. It's not part of the outline of today. But do you understand what I'm talking to you about? Unless God pushes me to say that. But for those of you here who are about to get, this is simple. You're evaluating somebody. He said, like, trust me. I'm going to take you on a journey. You look at him. He's low self-esteem. He's always suspicious. He's always afraid they're going to run away. He's always accusing you. He said, no, this guy has low self-esteem. He can't make money for both of us. No. And the person has no ideas. He sees that he's complaining about economy. No strategic, no, 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 no creativity, no ideas, no vision. No, you don't follow him in the journey. Come on, are you with me? And then somebody that is broke, who can pray, who can fast, no spiritual authority, you will wreck your destiny following him on a journey. And then finally, this person, does they have strategic relationships, people he can talk to, people that can open doors, connections and opportunities and platforms. If he doesn't have that, he's a poor man going somewhere to happen. Am I talking to somebody here? Can you lift your right hand? What I've taught you now, these four points can make your destiny. It can change your future. Lift up your hand. I command right now, as you step out of this place, your life open up. Yeah. If I hear you are amen, you take your portion. Yeah. So don't look down on yourself because you don't have cash. If you have these four things, you are a soldier going somewhere. You are rich. I've always carried myself like I am rich. Because I know I am rich. Are you rich? Oh, this first service, people. I think I have to be asking resident pastor to preach first service. Praise the Lord. Can you lift up your right hand? I declare over you. Money will bow to you. You say, listen, if things are not okay, but the man is okay, it's only a question of time before there's a turnaround. If things are not okay, but the man is, is the man that makes the destiny, not the destiny that makes the man. I'm in the wrong house. Are you hearing me? You know, some of you came from villages where they say, can you, can you open your hand? You open your hand. They say, they say, they say this, is, this is your akaraka. Your destiny. Are you hearing me? Nonsense. There is nothing like destiny written in stone. Nothing. That's why some people get confused when prophets prophesy and it doesn't happen. It doesn't matter what the prophet prophesies unless it has an eternal significance. It is dependent on man's partnership with God before it happens. And prophecies of eternal significance are already said to die in scripture. So whatever anybody is prophesying now has nothing to do with that. If the man doesn't cooperate, the prophecy will waste. Am I talking to somebody here today? <laughs> That's why people get, because they think that if God said it, this is a plan of God. No, 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 no. There are many things that stop the plan of God on earth. In fact, if nothing stops the plan of God for you, you can stop it by yourself. And I know they hear me. You can stop it by yourself. I declare over you, you will go forward. Look at what Proverbs 24, 16 says. It says, no matter how many times you trip them up, God's loyal people don't stay down long. Soon they're up on their feet, while the wicked end up flat on their faces. The righteous may fall many times, but he keeps rising. It's that mentality that keeps taking you up. I see you go there. Yeah. And then the third thing I want to remind you is this. A man whose source is a supernatural will do whatever it takes to keep covenant channels open. If your source is the supernatural, 
you will do whatever it takes to keep covenant channels open. Everybody here listening to me. You see, when we talk about uh, tithing and serving in church and doing all kinds of things and praying and all of that, it's not for everybody. Not everybody cares. The people whose source is not the supernatural, they don't bother. They know where the, you know, everybody knows where they're drawing from. Everybody knows where their source is. Come and talk to me. You went to school, didn't you? Ah? Huh? Do you know there are some students, when the teacher is teaching in the class, they don't care. Talk to me. You know why? Obu again, we're a plan. You are not hearing me. This guy, he has a plan. He's not going to fail, though. He has no plan to fail. He must pass this exam, but not by studying. Doesn't care what the teacher is. He just sits down there, they moping at you. He has a strategic plan. <laughs> you know, some people, their plan is to study. They study, they understand, they come to the same hall, they sweat it out. A car is traveling 50 kilometers an hour. An apple fell from the tree. And uh, somebody jumped from a building. Okay, calculate uh, this and you calculate X. <laughs> you want to take the pen and chook the man. He said, this is X. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but the man that has a plan, he finishes. I watched the cartoon the other day. Very bad cartoon, but I will still share with you. Two boys were in the class, and the teacher said a very serious question. And they finished. One of them came back. Into, what happened? He said, I submitted an empty. Uh, no, their result came out. One saw, so he got zero. And the mark is zero over 40. Huh? I tried, but I got zero over 40. He saw his friend. His friend was laughing. And he knows he's more intelligent than his friend. He said, what happened? You got 40 over 40. He said, yes. He said, when I saw, I couldn't write anything. I just wrote, this is my sister's number. <laughs> and the teacher knows he has a beautiful sister. <laughs> he said, this is my sister. I wrote the sister's phone number. <laughs> the teacher gave him 40 over 40. <laughs> Oboga has a plan. <laughs> You are not hearing me. Yeah, his plan worked. <laughs> One study that sweated. Zero. Everybody has their plan. In the school of prosperity, some people go by labor. Some go by mysticism. Some go by blessing. Labor is human effort. Mysticism is occult help. Blessing is what we go with. Proverbs 10.22 The blessing of the Lord he make it rich and added no so. If you have my voice, say yes. Labor cannot lift you beyond a certain point. Occult sponsorship will lift you. But when the devil gives you a shoe, he will take your leg. Blessing of the Lord. That's where we stand for. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. And when you are looking for the blessing, there are five things that activate the blessing. The first one is meditation on God's word. You study it. You faith it. You confess it. You obey it. Meditation on God's word is one thing that activates the blessing. The second thing that activates the blessing is being diligent in your business. You have vision. You are making investment. You are working hard. You are networking. It, it activates the blessing. The third thing that activates the blessing is the force of a fighting spirit. You are a warfare person. You are an adventurous person. You are a risk taker. That activates the blessing. The fourth thing that activates the blessing is kingdom advancement actions. Kingdom advancement actions. 
you are hosting the ark of God. You are hosting a G12. You are going on evangelism. You are part of kingdom service teams in the church. You are an intercessor. The things you do to advance the kingdom of God, that's another thing. And the fifth thing that opens the door and activates the blessing is the practice of generosity. You are tithing. You are sacrifice. You are philanthropy. These are the five things that activate the blessing of God in a man's life. So you are either going by labor or you are going by mysticism or you are going by the blessing. Somebody say the blessing. Yes. And everybody in church knows which one they choose. When you hear people say, there's nothing like God helping a man, you know they've chosen labor. No, you're not hearing me. When people go from here to here to go and get something they put in their business, they're looking for mysticism. But when you stay under the anointing and you look at these five things and pursue them, that's why I'm talking to you on the test of the 10%. Because tithing is a key part of releasing your blessing. Somebody said, my blessing is here. Blessing. Oh, I'm talking to a wrong person. Shout it louder, my blessing is here. Blessing. Lift your hand and shout, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus. Please, can your hand go higher than your head and shout, Father, Father. in the name of Jesus, I walk in your blessing. Shout, Amen. Amen. You say, listen to me. Titan is giving God the first 10% of your gross earning because you are God's covenant partner. How many of you here are covenant partners with God? Lift your hand, let me see. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. Now, if you're a covenant partner with God, you give God 10% of your gross earning. Gross earning means this, that if your salary is 100 naira, and you're doing business that brought another 100 naira, and people dash you another 100 naira, the 300 naira is the gross earning, not the salary. Then you give God out of that a 10% of it. Am I clear? Uh, am I clear? Now, a lot of people don't do things like that. But it doesn't matter. In Genesis 14, 18 to uh, 22, you see the first place that tithing happened in the Bible. It's a Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. That's why when you come to Gateway and we're giving you tithe, we bring forth bread and wine. Because Jesus is the New Testament Melchizedek. Bread and wine is a communion of his body and blood. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. He was a priest of the Most High God. Next verse. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God. So there's a blessing that he gave. Possessor of heaven and earth. Next verse. And he blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him what? Tithes of everything. Now, Abraham had gone to war against five kings and defeated them and taken what they had and was going home and he remembered there is this guy who is the priest of the most high god are you with me are you guys with me yes, so he turned on his way home and went to the house of uh, Melchizedek. i don't know whether he went to the temple or to the house but because the man was both a priest and a king i said listen i'm here this is what I came back from, from the battle. And Melchizedek said, okay, uh, what is this? I came to give you 10% of it. Bless me. And the man spoke a blessing and gave him a communion. And he went home. And the Bible said, Abraham became possessor of heaven and earth by that blessing. The man that had the promise received a covenant. Are you with me? Now, that's what happened to Abraham. Now, do you notice, if you read further, you'll find this out. That before Abraham... Uh, before, after that time, a man came to see Abraham, the king of Sodom. Somebody say Sodom. Because when Abraham went to that war, Abraham went to that war to defend Sodom. And the king of Sodom came to Abraham and said, please, collect everything, take all the money, everything you came back with, just give me my wife and children. And Abraham said, I don't need your money. Take everything. He said, I lifted up my hand to the most high God. And I have received a blessing from God. He said, tomorrow, if I collect anything, you will say, you made me rich. And Abraham gave back everything and walked away. Now listen, 
Abraham was more interested in the blessing of Melchizedek than in the money of the king of Sodom. You didn't hear me. Abraham, a man said, take all the things. He said, no, 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 I'm not taking. Tomorrow, I don't want you to claim that you made me. May no man ever claim to make you. He said, I went to God. I encountered something. And I know my future is secure. Who here is sure your future is secure? I lift my hand over you. Before this year is over, you'll be rolling in mega cash. Now, a lot of times you hear people talk about a tithing. And they say, in the New Testament, there's nothing like tithe. I don't want to bore you with theology. I may do that in the second service. But let me say this to you. In the Old Testament, before the law. Somebody say, before the law. How many of you know that the law you see in the Bible came at the time of Moses? Huh? Abraham, Job, all of them, Jacob, Isaac, all of them lived before Moses. Huh? So they were living before the law. So this tithe was paid before the law. So before the law, tithing was an expression of gratitude and honor to God as a covenant partner. That's what it was before the law. That's why if you go to Genesis 28 verse 20, the place from where we got the name Gateway, he said, and Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. Uh, Jacob is running away from Esau and is making a vow to God. God, if you will help me and provide for me. Next verse. So that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Are you with me? This guy is making a deal, a covenant deal with God. Next verse. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. He said, if I go in peace and return, you will be my God. Number two, I will build you a house. Are you with me? You see, a lot of businessmen, they want to pursue mega contracts. They want to do, go into politics. They want to, they will never kneel with, before God, slide down on his altar and cut a deal with God. A year opens, Lord, if you take me through this year, this is, you know what they do? They say, God, you know me. If I prosper, I will do something. And God said, I know you, you're a thief. I won't prosper you. Come on, are you with me? This property, Lord, if I secure this land for this estate, I'm giving you a building there. I'm giving you a property there. No. He said, Lord, you know me. I will remember you. God said, me too, I remember you. The last time you ate your tithe, I remember. He said, this stone I will say for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely, somebody say surely, Give the tent unto you. Now listen to me. Abraham was not uh, Abraham was not here. Abraham is dead, but Isaac is there. Sorry, Jacob is a grandson, and Jacob is remembering what his grandfather did. There was nobody that gave them a law, but it's a practice in their family. You are not hearing me. It's a covenant thing between them and God. And in this house, I've made you understand we are covenant people. Are we? Can you lift up your hand? In the name and authority of Jesus, the covenant will work for you. Amen. Now, during the law time, Moses gazetted Titan into an obligation. It became an obligation. That's why in Malachi chapter 3, he can say, bring in all the tithes into the storehouse. Somebody say, bring. bring. Can I say, bring? bring. Can I say, bring? bring? So he began to say, bring it all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be meet in my house and prove me now here we say the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it I have to start rounding up now but are you catching me? so people say oh it was before under the law no 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 it started before the law and then during the law it was made into an obligation and after the law it still stands today are you with me? As a faith principle that activates the blessing. Look at what Jesus said in Luke chapter 11 verse 42 concerning Titan. To show you that Jesus understood it. Look at it. He said, what sorrow awaits you Pharisees? He's talking to the Pharisees. For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. The Pharisees, are you with me? Are you with me? 
The Pharisees were tightening. If you look at King James, it says, Cummins and Annis. Listen. Uh, how do I describe it now? Uh, if they go to farm and bring corn back, they will tight. Are you with me? If they go and get green, they will tight. If they harvest ogo, they will count the ogo, they will tight. That was how serious they are keeping the law of tithing. And you say, you, are, you, are, you guys are foolish people. You say, you are you, woe to you. You tight these things, but you ignore justice and the love of God. Now, anybody that reads this and stops at that point, goes out and says, Jesus condemned them for tithing. No, he said, you tight, but you ignore something. And then look at how Jesus finished the statement. He said, you should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. You should tithe, yes. Jesus personally endorsed tithing. So the preacher preaching against tithing is preaching against what Jesus endorsed. No, you didn't hear me. So they read the Bible. But because of envy and greed, they won't speak the truth. Lift up your right hand. I speak over you today. As you step out, you will see God help you. I wish your amen will be louder. Titan is a covenant principle that equalizes all of us. Look up here. Are you with me? If we are giving in church now, everybody please listen. For giving in church right now, a man gets up and gives a, a seed of 100,000. Another person gives a seed of 1 million. Another person gives a seed of 10,000. Their harvest cannot be equal. Can you accept that? Yes, Any, even a fool who knows planting of seed knows that if you went to a farm now and planted 100 corn, another person planted 1,000 corn, another person planted 10,000 corn, your harvest can't be the same size. Can you accept that? But look at in the Titan issue. In Titan, God doesn't measure size of seed. He measures percentage of seed. So a man is any 100,000. He brings 10,000 and drops to God. That's 10%. A person earns 100 million. He brought 10 million and gave to God. That's 10%. A person is earning uh, 50,000. He took 5,000 and dropped to God. That's 10%. All of them, heaven considers is equal sacrifice and gives the blessing equally. Now, what you do after that concerns you. No, you didn't hear me. <laughs> Titan is about equal sacrifice to give everybody the same platform to rise. They're not hearing me. It's a covenant obligation. Can you lift up your right hand? As you step out of this place, the blessing is poured on you. <laughs> And you pay your tithe where you receive the word of God. He said, bring the tithe into the storehouse. Tithe is not for the church in your village that you are trying to help. It's not for the missionary somewhere. That's why some people refuse to approach. Their business won't grow. They know more than the word of God. They argue every truth you teach them. And they wonder why things are not working. They wonder why doors have not opened. You have been doing the right thing. You are righter than me and wronger in his encounters. You are not hearing me. He said, he said, there's this uh, person over there. He's suffering, so I'm sending him my tithe. That's not what you do. He said, bring it to the place where you are taught. Billy Graham said something. He said, we have found in our home that God's blessing upon the nine-tenths when we tithe helps it to go further than ten-tenths without his blessing. Tithing is a heart test. It is not a law test. It's a heart test. It tests the sincerity of your love. First Corinthians 2 verse 9 says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What? Are you still hearing me here? What God has prepared for them that love him. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What he has prepared for them that love him. Look at 2 Corinthians 8, 8 and 9. I want to read that and then I start closing it. 2 Corinthians 8, 8 and 9. It says, speak not by commandment. There is nothing we are doing we are going to force you but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Next verse. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. It's I'm proving the sincerity of your love. That's why I ask you to tie it. 
You can hang around this church. Now, this is the first teaching on Titan I've done in the last one and a half years. It's not every Sunday you come, we're shouting at you. I need you to understand. There are principles. A lot of people don't obey them. They think it's a game. If you're here, say yes. yes. The test of the 10% is a two-way test. God tests if you are trusting him as your source. And you test God's covenant faithfulness in commanding blessing on you. So if you don't trust God as a source, don't give your tithe. And if you don't believe that God blesses people, don't give your tithe. But if you trust him as your source, and you believe he blesses people, then give your tithe. Let me give you five things that not paying your tithe tells us about you as a Christian. Number one. It says about you as a Christian, number one. That if you are not paying tight, you cannot fully put God first in your life and resources. That's what not paying tight tells us. That you have decided that you cannot fully put God first in your life and resources. Secondly, when you see a Christian who doesn't pay tight, you know they have not fully overcome the hold of stinginess and covetousness. Anybody that's overcome the hold of stinginess and covetousness, paying tight is not a struggle. Another thing not tight in tells about a Christian is this. That they have not submitted to God's financial stewardship system. They are not God's stewards. They believe that they are in charge of their money. So they do anything they want with it. They decide where it goes. They quarrel with anybody that tells them do otherwise. That's why you see some business and say, I am the owner of them. I give it anywhere I want. No, you are not the owner. If you die now, your hands will be empty. Am I talking to somebody? Is anybody catching what I'm dealing with here today? That's why I'm taking you step by step because some of you here, the things that you're going through now could change by tithing. Another thing that not tithing tells us about you is that you're not genuinely invested in the advancement of your church. Can you imagine a businessman who comes in here? He sits down. He sees all the projects going on. And he puts his hand in his pocket. He brings out 1,000 and puts in an envelope and drops and walks away. And God is watching him. That's why you have X and X and X tomorrow. Because this person can't walk in the blessing of God. If you were God, will you be happy with such a person? You are seeing God doing so much. Come on, are you with me? I walked into the church this morning before, even, before service started. Somebody walked up to me. He said, Pastor, I, I want to be part of this uh, tiling of the church. I told them to stop the tiling because we're having other projects. Doing. He said, I want to be part of that. I brought 500,000. I said, please, let them continue. I didn't ask for it. I didn't announce it. I didn't bother about it. I said, I have other things to do. Let's move on. He said, no, I want to be. When people come to a church and they see that there's accountability in that church, they should be motivated to do more. Can you accept that? They should be motivated. When you walk in here, what do you see? That you walk in here, we bought this place, no raising of money. We are building all of this, nothing. Our TV is going on. Our life center network is going on. We are on radio Monday to Saturday every week. No special partnership. It doesn't occur to you that this person, the tiny meeting I'm bringing here, programs everywhere in different cities, planting churches, building, buying properties, that this guy... Then cover the broken into two. He's not taken from this house. You need to understand that when you see faithfulness, you back up that faithfulness. That, am I talking to somebody here? Too? That's how life works. That's what it means to walk in integrity. Integrity is not a uh, tight or ban. The way you are looking at me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. There are a lot of people who talk holiness who are thieves. As they're sitting down here now, in the police station in heaven, their picture is hanging, one tail for God robbery. <laughs> one tail for robbing God. This man is a thief. He's been robbing God for five years. Who is that person? You're here now. The man is here. He's a God robber. May it not be you. <laughs> Lift up your right hand. In the name that's above every name, my God help you. Now, there are three situations you notice in Titan. Number one is when Titan is difficult. Number two, when Titan is not working. And number three, when Titan is being abused. Let me tell a little bit about when Titan is difficult. Titan is difficult when revelation is lacking. When you don't have the revelation of it, 
you find it difficult. You don't see the blessing in it, you find it difficult. Tithing is also difficult when somebody's financial pressure is too much. Some people find it difficult. But that's the time that your faith is proven. Lord, I don't have much. But I'm trusting you to provide. I'll give you your own. Are you with me? If you have my voice, say yes. Tithing is difficult when people don't keep financial records. That's why in your business, keep your records. You're not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. When people give me anything, I do my best to record it. Every Saturday I sit down and I check what came into my hand that week. I check my accounts. Anything that people, even if people sent a see prophet's offering, I'll check that. This is how much that came. Okay. This is how much that I say. Okay. This is my tithe. I calculate it. I pay before I stand before you because I can't be blessing you with cast hands. If you have my voice, say yes. Tithing is difficult when money is there, but greed is too much. There are men that have money, but their greed is too much. They can't pay tithes. If you have my voice, I hear you, sir. Yes. Tithing is difficult when a church leader is living a life of opulence and the church is struggling. Do you know, so you go to some churches, the man is busy buying cars and busy building houses and poor people everywhere in the church and the church is not doing anything. Please, what I'm saying, is that true? A lot of members stop tithing. When you see that uh -uh, in this place, now check yourself. Check how much you have given in the last one month. Check how much you give regularly in the church. Check how much I've gone into these projects that you're here, buying the properties, doing all of that. You ask yourself, how is this guy coping? We're not getting money from government. There's no company that is, there's no place, America, abroad, anywhere that's sending you something. It's the small things that all of you give that God is using to do this. That's where to know that this is what, are you hearing my voice? Lift your right hand. The blessing is upon you. Amen. So what do you do? Please, put God first. Tell your neighbor, put God first. What do you do? Make sure your financial records are accurate. What do you do? Listen, those of you who have not been tightened before, start today and give out one year vow of unbroken tightening. Lord, I want to prove you. I will pay my tithe for one year. I want to see whether you change my life. Many people that say they did that, by the time they've gone three months and they've not seen a blessing, they stop. And they think that God will change. No, do it for one year. Some of you can do it for two years. Lord, I want to see whether you can change my life. I know what it means to go for a long time without anything like broken tithe. I get up in the morning, I check the something. And if the tithe is 100,000, pay 150 and I move on. And I know what it means for God to continually, supernaturally bless you. You're not hearing me. I know what it looks like. Why I'm teaching the way I'm talking now. This is not like a church service. I'm talking to you simply. Huh? It's because I don't want it to look at, well, you know when the pastor is shouting, you must give to God. I'm explaining simple principles. Not because, oh, he needs your money. No, your tithe is not my money. There are some churches you go to. They say, the Bible says, first fruit belongs to a pastor. And there's, the Bible says, tithe belongs to a pastor. In this church, no. Tithe is used for the things you are seeing. You are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Our giving, our first fruits, everything is used for the things you are seeing. Everywhere you go, you see the hand of God helping us. Move around town. Locations are building. Is a titan. Lift up your hand. In your giving, let the blessing come upon you. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. amen. It's not the pastors. It's like that. There's no. Say, so listen. When a man stands before God without ulterior motive, he is bold. When I talk to people in gateway, my mouth sharp. I talk without bending mouth. Because if you search anything, God has helped me. If this one is a problem of life, I saw them long ago. Can you lift your hand? In the name of the one who died and rose again, you will never be poor. Amen. Now keep a record of your tithing and keep a record of the prayers you pray before you are tight and you are first fruit and all that and see whether God keeps account with you. 
And when tight is not working, once in a while, sit down. When tight is difficult, sit down with your man of God and explain your business and ask for hands to be laid on you. If you can't see your lead pastor, the other pastors, their zonal pastors, there are all kinds of things. Let them lay hands on you and speak over you and you will see the blessing there. God say, prove me. And God can't lie. Somebody this morning has to stay with God and say, God, I have been a thief. I admit I am a robber. You are not hearing me. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. <laughs> me. Me. Don't you cool? <laughs> I admit I am a criminal. Jehovah, can you forgive me? And give me grace from today to be faithful. And then you go back and check all you have stolen. And take a percentage of it as a restitution and drop before God and say, Lord, can we start afresh? Somebody needs to do that now so that your destiny doesn't close. Because struggle without help, it gets why. Stand to your feet. This is a teaching that can take five classes that I just did for you in one. What I'm saying, is that true? Can you lift up your two hands and say, my father. my father. Everybody lift your hand and shout, my father. My father. In, the In the name of Jesus, I receive grace, I receive grace. To, honor to honor you with my tithes. Open your mouth and pray. I receive grace to honor you with my tithes. I receive grace. I receive grace. Rakato Marazakata to honor you with my title. Hero Mateke Belezikede. Anada da 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 Open your mouth, asking for mercy, asking for forgiveness, for breaking your covenant walk with him. Into the bracket, shall take a bit, a drag about, a kikantaka, a bracato loose. Somebody shout amen by thunder. Amen. Grab your neighbor's hand on the right on the left. Can I hear you shout if you are here to your neighbor? The covenant will work for you. Lift up your neighbor's hand and say, Father. Father, I pray for my brother. I pray for my, I pray for my sister. Pray for my Let, the Let the covenant come alive, come alive in this life. In this life. Let, the Let the blessing be activated now. Open your mouth and pray for that man. Over. The covenant we work for. Yeah! 
your amen be louder. Amen. Lift up your two hands. God cannot say prove me. And you obey and there's no proofs. Lift up the hand. As you are hearing me now. Every area of your life begin to rise. I want that amen to hit heaven. Lift up the hand. As you live here now. Your tight has a voice in the spirit realm. Over your business, let the tide speak again. Over your marriage, let the tide speak again. Over your health, let the tide speak again. Every devourer attacking your destiny, I rebuke in the name of the Lord. I rebuke in the name of the Lord. I rebuke in the name of the Lord. I see your destiny rise. I see your career rise. I see a turn around in every area. Go forward and prosper. Brothers and sisters, giving 10% without giving life is a waste of time. The beginning of everything is salvation. If you're here this morning, you have not given your heart to Jesus. That's where we begin from. Jesus, I love you. I surrender to you. That's the beginning. If you're like that, please, nobody's sitting down now. Whenever we are praying, respect the Lord and respect yourself and stay in his presence. Can you now... Please lay your hand on your chest if you are giving your life to Jesus. And then say, Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. Take over my life and change me forever. Amen. If you pray that prayer, can you come to the altar? I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for you. While they are coming, there are one or two persons here who are sick in their body. You can lay your hand where the sickness is. Even though this week is our week of our Good Friday meetings. But I believe you can still be healed right in this service. Father, I pray for such a one. I command in the name that's above every name. That the power of infirmity be broken. The curse be broken. Now in the name of Jesus Christ. If you pray the prayer of salvation, can you be fast on the altar now? Can you move? I pray Lord that every growth disappear. Every pain go. Every walk of the wicked be cut off. Newness of life. In the name of Jesus. Father, I bless your daughter with newness of life. I bless your son with newness of life. In Jesus' name. Please take them this way. Take them this way. Give the Lord a clap as you get seated. Be seated briefly. Now, even if you came here today not planning to pay tight, you don't have any excuse now. God has caught you red-handed. Praise the Lord. So pick up your checkbook and write. Transfer to the account on the screen. Or take your ATM card to the POS at the back over there. And you can use that to give. Whatever it is, pay your tithes now. Everybody paying your tithe, come to the table of Melchizedek. Every other person giving your offering, lift your offering with your two hands to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, I dedicate this communion to you. Let it carry the seal of your covenant. Let it break every regime of darkness. As they take it, let there be healing and deliverance. Let the blessing be upon your people. Upon every man and woman in this house today, show them help and mercy. And command the life of your spirit to rest on them. I speak the blessing. And every man and woman shout, Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's give our tithes and our offerings. Through this week again, powerfully, we'll be enjoying... The altar of mercy. This week was, the last week was very brutal, was it? And I want you to please know that this week is Easter week. And uh, the blood must speak. Will the blood speak for you? So please be with us all through. Now the homecoming begins on Wednesday. What day? Can you give the Lord a better clap offering? If you know any member anywhere in this world... Please, if the person is not planning to come, send a rope and tie him. And drag him back here. They must come. Praise the Lord. So, I'm, we're expecting all our locations to at least have representatives. So, we are trusting that they will come and God will bless them in their coming in Jesus' name. Now, you that is here. Wednesday, every day, there's morning session and evening session. This is the only program in Gateway. We have morning and evening. 
There's no other program we do like that. These are homecoming because people are coming and they are camping. Those who are coming from far will be staying in the places we provide for them. Those of them that are, uh, don't have accommodation. Those who have sometimes caught with their friends like you. Amen. So every day we arrive early and then we minister. In the evening we go. Saturday there's no morning session. All we do on Saturday is the evening session where we do a raffle draw and do some dancing and uh, celebration. I mean, if you're on Saturday here, you know the gateway craze. Anybody remember last year Saturday? My God, you know the gateway craze. Just come and chop life. I can't hear your amen. Okay, so uh, this week we want you to be there. Now, April is approaching. Next Sunday is the last Sunday before April. All the Sundays of April, uh, we will be celebrating the gifts of our members. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? We'll be celebrating the gifts of our members in the Bible studies. So I will be teaching. But each day before I teach, for example, the first Wednesday before I teach, we're going to allow many of our members some of them from Choba Campus, UST, here in the headquarters, everywhere, Ignatius Ajuri and other. All of these young, young boys that do skits and all of that, that produce it online. We're going to play about five or seven of them, a few, few, few minutes, not up to five minutes each. Watch them, celebrate them, pray for them, and then I will teach on that, on becoming bigger on your inside and all of that, and then do impartation. Are you with me? Uh, are you with me? Because we have taught you on business and all that. I want to see that we celebrate the gifts. Do you want us to celebrate the gifts in the house? So we'll do it on Wednesday. So there'll be entertainment first. We'll make all of that. It will be fun. Then we'll get into the ministrations and all that. Then second Wednesday, we we'll deal with the music makers. We we'll pick some of the musicians. Give them five, five, ten, ten minutes and all that. They sing just like we do in Aviva. Are you with me? And all that. Pick them and after that, I will teach again. And then the third week, we deal with the comedy gifts in the church. I'm sure you know we have a lot of comedians in Gateway that are nationally doing well. We do that. Then the fourth week, we deal with the standout creatives. Among these people, the ones that stand out, we give them a chance, combine all of them, and we still minister. So we're going to have our two hours packed to the full. Give the Lord a better clap of it. So we want to celebrate the gift. So all through the month of April, those of you who I'm announcing is, if you are one of those who are interested, you see the leaders in charge and make sure that we have a beautiful time and uh, you are part of it. They will evaluate what we are presenting. If it doesn't meet our standard, you will not present. Okay, today is your first day in Gateway. Let me see your right hand up. Stand up. Carry your bag and Bible. Be the first for me to lay hands on you now. You have one minute and it's expiring as I'm counting. I bless you. My God lift you and give you destiny speed. Move quickly. I bless you. My God lift you and give you destiny speed. Move over there. I bless you. My God lift you and give you destiny speed. Keep coming. Make sure you carry your bag and Bible. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. In the name of Jesus, my God, lift you and give you destiny speed. Go this way. I bless you. The Lord, turn your life around. The Lord, command the blessing upon you. In the precious holy name of Jesus. Come, young man. Okay, first service, give the Lord a shout. I bless you. Wave your hand to the Lord and shout. Father, this is the week. Let it be a week of mysterious blessings. Turn their lives into testimonies of covenant encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. You are the best. Please, as we are moving, walk us, stay back. Let's have the second service worship begin now. Uh -huh. Second service, call me with a shout.